Now this is a motherboard unboxing that I've been pretty excited to do. This is the ASUS Sabertooth P67 motherboard. So it's part of their TUF series, which stands for The Ultimate Force, which has a very clever little logo that's actually a T and then a U and then an F, sort of. But you, you get the point, right? The Ultimate Force, TUF. TUF series has a five year warranty, so it has guaranteed reliability. It also has a friggin' axe on the front of the box. So it is tough and will destroy you. Okay, here we have its support for LGA 1155, so that means you have full support for all of the Intel Core i7, Core i5, and Core i3 CPUs on this platform. It features the P67 chipset, which means that the onboard video on your Core i7 processor will not be supported by this board, but honestly, who cares? This is a performance board. You're going to want to put a nice, dedicated graphics card into it. So let's have a look at what ASUS has to say for themselves about this board. We have thermal armor armor, which is total airflow boosting heat dissipation. We'll show you that once we get it opened up. We have thermal radar, real-time heat detection and heat removal. So monitors temps in critical parts of the motherboard in real time, automatically adjusting fan speeds to make sure the system maintains high stability without overheating. We have tough components, so certified by military standard for tough duty, hence the five-year warranty. DigiPlus VRM, so fully digital VRM for excellent voltage regulation. We have a front panel USB support, uh, compatible with any chassis. Enjoy faster throughput without relegating cables or devices to the hard to reach rear I.O. So that means it has a USB proper pinout header rather than just a cable in, that goes around to the back of the board. EFI BIOS, which is awesome because it even supports the scroll wheel in the graphical interface in the BIOS, so you can use a mouse to change all those settings instead of the keyboard. And it has a complete USB solution, double USB access, double convenience. Okay, what does that mean? Facil facilitate strategic accessibility for both the front and rear panel. Okay, well, we'll see what they mean once we get that opened up. Let's have a look at the back of the board where it probably says all of the same stuff. Tested server grade reliability, so that's something they hadn't mentioned on the front. And now let's get it opened up and have a look at this board. This is a very unique looking motherboard, and you can't really tell through that highly reflective surface, I suspect. So it will still we're still in suspense about what this new Tough Series board looks like. Let's have a look at the included accessories. We have a user's guide, a utilities and drivers DVD, which you should throw away, a powered by ASUS sticker. So download the latest off the ASUS website. We have a five-year warranty notice that comes with it as well as a thermal radar digi plus vrm user guide cool thank you next we have an io shield we have two sata 2 3 gigabit per second cables and two sata 3 6 gigabit per second cables although please note they are identical other than the white color coding on the cables they will both work with either speed grade we have four mounting screws not sure what those are for guess we'll hopefully find out then we have an SLI bridge very tight spacing on the SLI uh, compatible slot oh actually no that's not that tight uh, no nope, that's fine never mind and then we have their Q connect for the front uh, case switch LED all that good stuff as well as the front USB 2 and finally, the board itself. So normally when ASUS's boards come in one of these uh, paper sleeves, they actually don't have an anti-static bag on them, but the Sabertooth P67 seems to be a bit of an exception to that rule. And here it is. So that's the thermal sheath that we were talking about before. You can see it has like a, like a plastic covering on it, okay, that... Oh, okay, so that's what these screws are for. So you can actually, you have alternate mounting screws to actually put a fan over the north bridge should you so desire. So, wow, this actually makes it kind of more difficult for me to point out a lot of the features of the board because I, well, maybe it makes it easier because I can only see the things that qualify as features of the board. One thing that this design will allow you to do is have a very clean looking interior of your case because the only parts you're going to be able to see are the business parts of your board. So let's start where we usually start, which is the CPU socket. Very non-crowded CPU socket. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11. Okay, I'm not sure how many phases the power design is. Okay, hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
eight, nine, ten. Okay, it looks like an eight plus two phase power design on this guy. LGA 1155 socket, as I mentioned before, supports all LGA 1155 boards because you're using the P67 chipset. You have full support for K-series unlocked processors, overclocking those things to the max. Up here in the top left, we have the eight pin CPU power connector and it's in exactly its correct location. We have our MOSFET heat sinks here, as well as here using a typical ASUS Tough series color scheme. So we've got kind of a black, um, rough looking paint finish as well as like a green military rough looking paint finish on both sides. We have full support for oops, uh, up to four sticks of dual channel DDR3 memory on, uh, can I even get this off? Yeah, there we go. So these are also tough uh, tough series looking uh, color schemes here as well. ASUS is using their quick install, I forget what the branding is for it, but basically it allows you to slide in the modules from one side and then clip in with only one side. So you don't have to clip in both sides at the same time. We have the Memo K button, which allows you to post with any memory sticks, even if they're not 100% compatible, it'll default to a very safe setting to allow you to post and then adjust your memory timings for optimal performance. We have our 24 pin power connector in its ideal location along the right hand edge. And here we have a USB three header so that will be for your front panel USB 3 we are also going to find uh, what is this okay here we go so we have four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports and it looks like we have four SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports so two of these are going to be running off of the Intel chipset and two of them are going to be running off some third-party chipset, which I actually can't identify because most of the board is covered. So here we have our front panel connectors. That is your front power, reset, LEDs, all that good stuff. We have a set of three front USB 2.0 headers. So that it means up to six front USB 2.0 devices. We have a front firewire header as well as our front audio header. In terms of the PCI Express expansion, we have a pretty good looking layout here. So we have one, two, three PCIe 1X slots. We have two PCIe 16X slots. Remember, P67 boards, that is all of them, are going to split these PCIe 16X slots into dual PCIe 8X unless they have an NF200 or a similar chip. And then finally, one lone PCI slot. So if you're running sort of a mid-range configuration with one graphics card, then they leave you one, two PCIe e 1x a PCIe up to 8x and then one PCI slot and if you're running dual graphics so a high-end config they leave you two PCIe 1x slots since those are the ones that a high-end power user is more likely to use here we have a like shroud on the IO cup on the IO shield so we have one of those PS2 keyboard mouse combo ports which I'm a big fan of one two three four five six seven eight USB 2.0 ports optical audio out ESAT, uh, oh, dual ESAT, it looks like. Yep. Dual ESATA. And then we've also got USB 3.0, Firewire, Gigabit Ethernet, and 7.1 audio out. On the back of the motherboard, we find some mounting screws and not a whole lot else. And one thing I sort of want to figure out here is whether it's possible to remove the thermal armor shield, should you so desire. So, sorry guys, I'm gonna take just a minute here on camera, and yes, it looks like you can. So there's mounting screws on the back for it. There go here, 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 here. Basically, they're all over the back, and it looks like you can quite easily remove the thermal armor if you want. So that would be totally up to you because there may be some aspects of the board that are more difficult to work with with this thermal armor plate on, such as the PCIe um, uh, fasten, uh, uh, retention clips there. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean. Keep focusing that at the board while I walk over here and go get a graphics card. So uh, this is one thing that might be a little bit challenging when you've got a system completely loaded up it might be a little bit hard to access these these kinds of mechanisms so you know like let's say you've got one card you've got a dual slot card here and then you've got like a, another dual slot card here so this is like you have this much room in between to 
press down on that and pull out the card. So I'm not sure how challenging that's gonna be, but uh, another thing that might be a bit tricky is if you have a screwdriver with a wide tip like mine, it's probably not gonna fit down here to fasten the motherboard, so make sure you have a skinny screwdriver. So those are the only considerations that I'd probably uh, wanna be sure of. Oh, another thing is you might wanna make sure you have enough clearance between the IO shield and like a 120 millimeter fan mounted here in your case. Uh, to make sure that you have room for this. So those are the only considerations that I can think of that would really be a concern for the P67 Sabertooth. Thank you for checking out my unboxing, and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.